let's take a look at various what we call radiation zones and how we approximate the radiation integrals that we've got to use. If we go back to our vector potential, A sub Z, A sub Z is going to be mu over 4 pi times the integral of the current along the wire times e to the minus j k capital R over R, that's an outwardly expanding spherical wave factor, which includes both the phase factor and the amplitude factor. And I'm integrating that current now along the length of the wire. Now it just so happens because I have a wire that has two pieces, there's an integral from 0 to L over 2 and an integral from 0 to minus L over 2. In other words, the two halves of the dipole. Well, this is basically the expression that I need to solve in order to find A sub Z, and therefore in order to find the radiated electric field and magnetic field. R, in this case, is the distance of the observer to the current filament of interest, assumed to be located at x prime, y prime, z prime. Now, If this is my antenna, and then that's the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis uh, as such. The observer, in general, is going to be located somewhere out in space at x, y, z. The current filament of interest is located at z prime. And in this case, since the wire lies along the z-axis, x prime will be 0 and y prime will be 0. So as we start to work out what our expression r is going to be, which is the distance from that filament to the observer, it's clear that there are going to be some simplifications already. But this would be the expression that we would use at the outset as we set up the integral. R, in other words, is equal to the distance between the filament and the observer. Um, the observer's location is at vector R. The filament's location is at vector R prime. And we integrate along the length of the wire. So let's take a look at this value of R and see what sort of approximations we might want to make with it. R is equal to, as I indicated before, x minus x prime squared, y minus y prime squared, z minus z prime squared, the sum of those, square root of that. And we're evaluating that at x prime and y prime equal to 0. When we do that, we can then pull off terms in x, y, and z. This is the observer's position, essentially. And so we have an r squared here, which will be x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And the remaining terms will be minus 2zz prime plus z prime squared. And you can find this out just by taking these various quadratics inside the, the radical, squaring them. You'll see you get cross terms of the form minus 2zz prime, and you finally get a plus z prime squared. So this is r now rewritten. And what I can do is factor out small r. Now small r is the distance of the observer to the origin. It's literally x squared plus y squared plus z squared square root. So if I factor out small r, what I have is a cap r is equal to small r times the square root of 1 plus minus 2zz prime plus z prime squared over r squared. One more thing to note here. z, which is the height of the observer above the xy plane, that's just equal to r times cos theta, theta being the angle of the observer relative to the z-axis. So I can finally write my capital R for this case of the wire antenna as being little r square root of 1 plus minus 2rz prime cos theta plus z prime squared over r squared. Now this is exact up till now. And if you tried to integrate the expression for a sub z, the vector potential, using this exact value of r, this exact function, 
you'd find out that it would be a very difficult integral to perform. And in fact, it's not done, it's not able to be done analytically. You could only do it in terms of higher order functions. If we want to do it in terms of rather simple analytical functions, which is what we generally want to be able to understand the behavior of this set of fields, then we have to make some approximations. And the way we do that is through the use of a Taylor series. Now, a Taylor series allows you to expand any continuous function uh, in terms of the function evaluated at various places plus its derivatives evaluated at various places. And that's what we're going to do with R. We can write capital R, we rewrite it as follows, and we think of it as little r times 1 plus some small quantity x to the power 1 half. And if we do so, we can then write it as r times 1 plus 1 half x minus 1 eighth x squared plus 1 sixteenth x cubed, etc., etc., etc. This is the Taylor series expansion for the function r as a function of this small variable x. And if we note then that x is indeed this quantity, we can then put these terms together and write r as little r minus z prime cos theta plus 1 over r z prime squared over 2 sine squared theta plus 1 over r squared z prime cubed over 2 cos theta sine squared theta plus an infinite set of terms actually which continue to behave as 1 over r cubed, 1 over r to the fourth, 1 over r to the fifth, etc. In other words, all higher powers of 1 over r. What I want to do now is look at what would happen if we just took this first pair of terms in the Taylor series expansion and used only those in the approximation. Well, certainly we'd incur some error. And my question now would be, well, how much error do we incur if we only take those first two terms? The answer is, the error that we incur depends on the size, the maximum size of this next term. So let's look at that. Here's the next term in the Taylor series expansion, the one we're ignoring. If I multiply it by k, because back in my integral, if you recall, I have e to the minus j k cap r. So k times cap r is going to give rise to a phase. And if I multiply k by this term we're neglecting, that gives rise to a phase error in the integral. Well, I could then ask, where is this term maximum? And somewhat obviously, it's maximum at theta equal pi over 2. In other words, broad side of the antenna. That's where sine squared theta is 1. And so the maximum phase error is k z prime squared over 2 over r. And this is maximum when z prime is equal to plus or minus l over 2. So the maximum phase error is now k plus or minus l over 2 quantity squared over 2r. Well, if I really want to use this approximation, then I better make sure that this maximum phase error is small enough. Well, how small is small enough? Typically, if one incurs phase errors in the integral, in particular in the exponent that describes the superposition of all these phasers that gives rise to the radiated field, of no more than about pi over 8 radians, in other words, about 22 degrees. Generally speaking, then, the approximation is useful. It's a good one. So that would mean that kL squared over 8r has got to be less than or equal to pi over 8. Or in other words, the distance cap, uh, small r, in other words, the distance of the observer to the origin, has got to be greater than or equal to 2L squared over lambda. If that holds, then the integral can be performed with high accuracy. And it actually defines for us now a region around the antenna where we can use this so-called approximation. This is the so-called Fraunhofer region, or far zone around the antenna. So in the far zone, again, as long as r is greater than or equal to 2L squared over lambda, one can use this two-term Taylor series approximation.